On today's video, we're going to be reviewing this Infinity Q60. This is a base model Q60, but with a little bit of aftermarket support, you basically have what you get with the Red Sport. So, today we're going to find out if this is the grand touring car that Nissan and Infiniti have always wanted to make, or is it just a phony? So in today's video, we're going to drive this car, we're going to see how its driving characteristics are, what this magnificent VR30 is capable of, and talk about some other things of the car. One thing that's nice about this base model is it has a traditional steering column to rack. It is electrically assisted, but on the Red Sport, it has this weird coupling system where it can kind of vary the rate of your steering, and other reviewers have said it's very disconnected, and it's almost like playing a simulator with a, with a joystick controller. It doesn't work very good. Luckily, we won't have that problem here, so I already think that's going to be a pro to this Q60 in front of us. So, let's pop the hood and take a look at the VR30 underneath. That was very Nissan, the way it popped. Oh, dude, I get, like, Vietnam flashbacks from owning a Z32. So here it is, the VR30. This, I'm excited for this motor. It is a twin-turbo, 3-liter V6. And for those that don't know, these, these you breathe on them and they make another 100 wheel. They're really easy to tune. There isn't that much aftermarket support right now due to part of it being, I think, a lot of the buyers of this car are generally going to be of your elderly group. They're not really into modifying cars and they're not interested, right? But this motor has a lot of potential. And why I'm excited is I guarantee it's going to be in the next Z car if it isn't confirmed by the time this video is up. It just makes sense, right? Because the Q60 and the Q50 replaced the G chassis, and the G chassis always share the same drivetrain as the Z chassis. So with the new Z in the pipeline, I guarantee, I bet money, this motor is going to be in the new Z car. So, what's cool about this is it reminds me of the 300ZX. Maybe it's not cool though, because anyone who's worked on a 300ZX knows they're extremely complicated and difficult to work on. 300ZX had a 3 liter twin turbo engine, this has a 3 liter twin turbo engine, and this has three damn radiator caps. Why do you need so many radiator caps? Oh my god. It's complicated, which makes me think of 300ZX's. I am having some PTSD just looking at this, but I'll get through this video, I promise. So here it is, the VR30. So it is tight, it's complicated, there's a lot of lines and spooky hoses and actuators and oh, I'm scared already. So let's take it for a drive. Really excited to drive this car because I guarantee you I will put money on it, the new 400Z is going to have this motor. This engine is the VR30DITT, it's a direct injected uh, VR motor, it's 3 liters in twin turbo. Uh, right now with downpipes and a tune, a JB4 module, um, this car makes about 400 of the wheels now. So, it ain't no slouch, and it spools really fast. Extremely fast. Scary fast, like 2300 RPM full boost fast. <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, this thing, this thing moves, and it's only downpipes and a tune. That is crazy. All right, one more. Ah, ah, ah. We're going really fast right now. <laughs> and this thing is a boat. You can definitely feel the weight of the car. Luckily, this auto trans revs match for you, so that's nice, but it is just like a somewhat traditional slush box. It's nothing crazy like BMW's uh, ZF transmission that they use in a lot of their cars. Um, it's not that impressive of a transmission, honestly. It feels like a generic sh slush box that maybe shifts a little faster than your Altimas and Sentras. Well, I mean, those have CVTs, but you know what I mean. So, transmission really isn't to write home about that motor, though. Gobs of torque and power and a lot of pulling power. And this isn't a, this is a, this thing weighs about 4,000 pounds. It's not, it's not lightweight at all. So, this is all-wheel drive. Um, and it, it does torque splitting, right? 
And I wouldn't be surprised if this is the derivative of what the GTRs use, that Tesla system that uh, the GTRs are famous for. But the way this one works is essentially it's rear-wheel drive when you're cruising, and it goes to 50-50 torque uh, split front and back when it's needed. So we got a corner here, and we're just going to throw it in. Oh yeah, she's, she's a pig. She's a pig. So, out of the box right there, understeer. It is a heavy car, so we'll give it that. And it really wasn't intended to be a Miata, right? That's what the Z car is gonna be. Really isn't intended to be this, you know, amazing handling car. I mean, it's composed, it's not sloppy or anything. It's just, it defaults to understeer really fast when you start to corner hard. The one thing I don't like about, you know, the driving dynamics, um, this steering is super light, like extremely light. It is electric power steering. Um, but it's it's super boosted at any speed. It just feels very easy to turn, and I feel like I don't give that much feedback from the front axle either. It's very artificial feeling. Um, where that's great is when you have arthritis and you live in Palm Springs and you need to go to your Stater Brothers, and there's only one tight parking spot available. It does make it easier in your life here. But when you're ripping the car around, driving it hard, driving it fast, it really isn't that inspiring of a steering. The FRS definitely has probably the best electric power steering I've driven in a car sub, you know, 50 grand. When you get to the Porsches and stuff, Porsche really has a good electric power steering system. But this, on the other hand, it's really over boosted and, you know, thinking of the market this is being sold to though, it works for, you know, your typical market there. But from a driver's standpoint, not that good. The interior of this car is nice though. This is this is a great place to be, guys. The leather is nice. It looks really good. It's really slick in here. It is such a sleek looking car. And I think this is one of the best looking modern cars to come out of recent era, right? I just think the, the rear three quarter is my favorite shot of this car. Like, just it just looks so good. It flows so well. The design team of this car did a really good job and they made a beautiful car. Because a lot of new cars now are kind of ugly and just uninspired and just hideous. This is a gorgeous car. And the interior reflects the exterior, I think. For me though, driving this car, it gives me insight to what the new Z is gonna be like though. I really hope that we get the chassis we expect from a Z car, but with this motor in it. Part of me wants to throw this motor in my Z. I think that would be rad. That would be kick-ass, right? Because all I'd have to do is throw a motor in, do downpipes in the tune, and I'm at 400 wheel. I think this motor in the long term is gonna be extremely coveted. There isn't as much aftermarket support as you would see with like a N54 car from BMW. Uh, I mean, those cars have been thoroughly dissected and parts are all over to make power. These cars still aren't there yet. Uh, partly because I think the Q60, Q50 crowd, uh, a good chunk of owners aren't actually looking to modify their cars. It's just the guys that buy these and do modify them have a lot of power potential. And people are starting to realize that, so I think the aftermarket will come. Especially when the new Z comes out. When the new Z comes out and it has this motor, it's gonna have this motor. The aftermarket is going to be flooded with parts for this car. And it's gonna make a lot of power, I guarantee it. I will say the sound system in this car, probably one of the best I've experienced from a factory sound system, really good. In the door panels, there's actually mini subwoofers in each door panel, which is really cool. So there's a lot of bass in this car, a lot of good acoustics, it's really good. I'm not an expert in sound systems, but it sounds good, just, just take my word for that. Let's do another poll before we pull back in for the outro. <laughs> All right, that was 60 right there, dude. Like, that is crazy how fast this car is. Like, I'm telling you guys, imagine this in a Z that weighs 3,300 pounds, right? Dude, I'm looking forward to the next Z car for sure. This is a glimpse of it. So what the Q60 is, is, is a, it's an amazing street car, an amazing cruiser, an amazing street line car. It does all that really good. It is such a good looking car also. It's really a piece of art on wheels, really. Like, the design team, did a kick-ass job designing this car, and it just it's just nice to see a beautiful car hit the market in this modern era, right? Where it doesn't shine though, it's 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 heavy. That's its downfall, guys. It is a heavy car, so it really isn't the best handling car either, right? Just because it was designed for comfort and cruising, and that's really what it is. So if all you want is a fast straight line car that's very comfortable and still competent, right? Around the corner, it's not gonna fall apart like an old, you know, 60s truck. I mean, still handles corners okay. This is the car for you. But if you're looking for something for more track usage or autocross or canyon carving, this may not be the best platform for you. So, 
depending on what you're looking for guys, it dictates if this car is right for you. Nonetheless, this is an excellent car, I think it's a great car, and it really gets me excited for future Nissan products coming down the pipeline. So, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this car review, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.